All right, I'm doing some work to my Sundowner aluminum trailer. Getting ready for a big trip to Texas. All right, I've been working on this trailer for days. Been adding this Bulldog power jack to the Bulldog drop leg jacks because it was just hand crank. Been getting this thing wired. I did the world's worst welding job. You guys can laugh at me all you want. The welding on this sucks. But basically the way this thing, it's covered up and I explained in the last video how this motor just mounts on there. The shaft goes through there, pin goes in there. You have to weld this collar on. The problem was I had a 110 welder on an extension cord and if I welded for more than three seconds it popped the breaker. So I had to put all these little bubble gums all over it. It sucks, but it, it's on there and it works. Everything works. So what I'm doing now is I need to get this controller. This is the controls that will operate it, raise and lower, which I'm gonna mount on the body here. Maybe more here, but anyway, that's gonna get mounted. And then I've got this all wired up. Couldn't be simpler, pretty simple. Got that wired up. And then I gotta run these, this wire, through the body there. And as I explained before, we're gonna be having a battery and solar panel system on top of the trailer. So I bought this cool UWS um, toolbox here. That was like 500 bucks. And then the winch was whatever it was. So the box is gonna get, we, I gotta pull up this track, mount this box, uh, but there's gonna be a battery in the box. So that power line's gonna come through the bottom corner over there and then into this box, which has to be grommeted. There's a lot of work that has to happen in here. So um, that's what I'm working on. Now, the other thing that's happening is I'm replacing this gooseneck hitch with this one. It's called the shucker. The shucker. Now it has a uh, airbag on it. And so using this little lever system here, it's supposed to take some of the, the wiggle and the waggle and the bumps out. You see there's neoprene bushings and things. So I'll give you a review of how well I think it works after it's installed. I'm gonna to have to have two people help me. The thing weighs a hundred pounds. So a couple of people need to lift it, put it up into the uh, hole here, and then you put the pin in. Not happy with the company's response time. Their response time is terrible, answering questions. This is the second one they shipped me. The first one was shipped was, you know, they could technically say it's my fault, but Basically, I didn't get the right information, ordered the wrong one, and every single one of them comes with this damaged box. They don't do a very good job of protecting it. You can see the damage, if you want to call that, on the bolt. You know, they don't really protect those. They just throw it in a box, and then it just gets smashed, you know. I mean, you can't really hurt it because it's, you know, um, steel. But this was... A scratch and dent model and I'm sure they probably get a lot of returns on these because they're just not good with answering questions and telling you which one you need because apparently there's a couple different sizes and all these things so that kind of pissed me off so you got to make sure you know what you're getting or what to order dealing with them they seem to be like they're probably a small family kind of operation which is cool but you, I mean like all right like here's the here's the box they sent me like or the documents and clothes like they they hadn't even made a stamp or a label they just write it on there with a marker that's how you know it's small time operation you know it's like make a shipping label and stick it on there with your logo on it for f sakes anyway not everybody thinks like i do so i'm gonna get this installed get it put in i'm thinking about you know there's these two uh, retaining nuts that go in there to just give extra pressure. I'm thinking about drilling through those into the pipe for additional stability. I don't know if it's necessary, but I want it to be super deeper strong because you can see that there's been some tearing here, which is not going anywhere. It's not that big a deal. There's, there's like a half an inch of bust through there, but that was caused from this thing had being overweighted and bouncing up and down and wang, wang, bang, bang. So, you know, probably five, 10,000 pounds of pressure coming down on that pin and onto the, the ball back here. And that's what this thing prevents. This thing prevents, or it's supposed to, prevent the jerky bingy banginess 
because the way a the way they design fifth wheels and goosenecks is it allows you to put more weight on the front so like this system has a spread axle meaning the two axles which would normally be right next to each other are spread out a bit and they're also further back how that helps you is you have more range behind you for going up and over hills and things like that you know see how it's trimmed upwards right so i have more distance the owners of this trailer raised it up three inches as well to give it a little bit more height for clearance. Don't call me Shirley. Also, um, you know, you're putting more weight on the bed. I mean, I can, I have like a 5,000 pound payload I can put back here in this 3,500 dually. So I can put as much weight in the front of this thing as I want on the ass of this truck. But if you were doing it on the bumper pole there, you'd be limited to what, what is it? Four or 500 pounds or something like that, tongue weight. So you have to balance the trailer more. So it's a completely different trailer pulling experience, which is why I wanted one of these, which is why I bought this truck. I got tired of the bumper pull experience, different kind of trailer, backing up and turning around is completely different. I mean, you can jackknife this thing. I did a U-turn in this thing and I damn near hit this. You can turn and, and you are like, in the shape of a V. You can you can do a tight turn, which is another good reason to have the spread axle. On a tour bus, your tag axle on your rear can be lifted so that when you're making super tight turns, you're not scraping the tires. Because you'll 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 wear out, you know, you'll wear out the inside of your tire doing those kind of turns, you know. So there's a lot happening here on this trailer. We're gonna replace this tail light, which has surface mounted, has to be drilled out and it's riveted in. Still haven't been able to get these uh, fenders. I've called Sundowner Trailers, emailed them, been trying to get these parts. That's another company that just doesn't seem to give a shit. You know, if you're not calling to buy a trailer, I mean, I've been trying to get these parts from them for weeks, sent them emails, and uh, it's crickets. They're busy. Okay, well, we got this uh, shocker installed. The shocker hitch, the shocker. And um, it was heavy. It took a couple of us to put it on there. So I haven't actually mounted it on the truck yet. We're gonna see how that fits. I've been out here getting this thing wired. And I, might go, I need to go find my tripod for this. What I'm gonna do is um, put me a couple of rib nuts in there, get that mounted. And same with that other. And uh, move forward, let's go. Now there's the majority of the time what you want to do when you're attaching something to metal, you can use a self tapping screw. If you can get to the other side of it, you might want to use a nut and a bolt or a screw and a nut. Just like this surface here, uh, I can easily get to the back of this. Now I can just as easily use a rivet, but sometimes, when you have like a plastic box like this, it's really hard to get the rivet gun into there. And also when you're compressing the rivet, you can very easily break this tab or the grip length of the rivet won't go through both that and your attaching metal. Uh, but because I can get to the back of this, it's really easy to use just a screw and a nut. Now, why wouldn't I just use a self tapper? I could. But then you're gonna have these sharp screws back here. You ever reach back here, it could scratch you, right? So the best thing to do for that would be a screw and a nut, a little Loctite on it, in my opinion, because that's plastic. And I can't tell you how many times I've broken, you know, you can't get the rivet in there real good. And if you ever wanna take it off, you'd have to drill it out. So by using a small little nut and a bolt, that'll work. But on this situation, this metal, this aluminum you're seeing, it's not only the front wall of this trailer, but on the other side of it, it's the inside interior wall. You would be standing on the floor here and looking up over this. And you don't want self tapping screws going through there and just have some screw stab you in the leg or whatever. And if you want to use a nut and bolt, you'd have to have a buddy here with you to be on the other side to hold, hold your nut while you screw it in. Uh, and that's just, you know, there are ways to, there's little tricks to doing that, but you know, you could, tape your nut on and go on and thread it is forget it so in this situation we're going to use a uh, rib nut setter which i have down here 
This one is a Harbor Freight Doyle. I don't know who Doyle is, but the way these things work is, um, I forgot to grab a couple of screws, but I'll go get some. So what it does is it basically, you take this little, this little nut is what it really is. And it's gonna go into the hole that I'm gonna drill. And then using this tool, it will compress it and pancake it and flatten it. And it'll put a lip on both sides of it. And these little teeth will grip into the hole. And then you'll have a place that you can, you can screw into your little bolt. Fits. And the reason that's important is, you know, if you use the correct size bolt that doesn't protrude too far, it'll only be as long as you need it to be. So, You've got a quarter inch of plastic here and you don't want to wrench down too tight on that because this will split and crack. So if I was trying to rivet that, you'd have to have a really long grip range and then you have a nasty nut on it. So I think the rib nut is going to be the best way to attach this. So the first thing I have to do is drill a couple of holes uh, and they look to be quarter inch to me. Let me do a quick measurement. set up on this one here. This is where you can use your strength. that in there already? Now, I know what you're gonna say. Bob, they make versions of this that you don't have to use your arms that attach to your drill and a compressor. It's, I need one of those. But this is the one that I could buy today. And uh, it looks like it's on there pretty tight. So I can put just a little bit more stank on it, hold on. I think that's about as good as that's gonna get. Ooh, it's a little workout. So let's have a look here. That's gonna get a little bit there. That was too much. Well, that's never coming out again. Well, that's a nice clean install. So my plan for tying back these cables is I'll use some insulated P clamps and I think I may just rivet those on and that'll give you a little rivet head on the other end, but. Yeah. Like what you don't see is the editing that happens where every time I have to go get a tool, a screwdriver, a nut, or whatever, like there's a little bit of binding on this because the hole isn't perfect. That works out sometimes in your, you know, in this situation. And what I really should be using is a nylon assisted nut, that, but I'll keep an eye on it. I don't think it's gonna get loose, but now I've got controls right here, this string is really, I'm not gonna be going fast enough for this to flap in the breeze. So that's got a lot of tension on it. And uh, I didn't want any more holes on that side. I thought this is a great place to stand completely clear, you know, of the trailer this way. If, for, if anything goes wrong and it falls or something, I'm out of the way. So I need to get a hole in this bottom corner um, to run the cord through and I've got a pretty good idea where it needs to be, but I also got to remember that it goes in this way. 
So I'm just going to guess and I'm going to hope this is the right spot. That was perfect. That goes right up in there. So I'm going to have these, you know, I get this extra bit of this. I'm going to just kind of get out of the way. And uh, this power cable here, you know, like I said, we'll just put a couple of loops. I could probably share one loop for that one if I got a big enough one. Take a look at my uh, my loops. And then we'll just, you know, that, that, that hole's pretty tight. Wow. Yeah, some stuff you get from Harbor Freight is fantastic. But when it comes to things like their hardware fastener nuts and bolts, man, you just twist them right off. I mean, they, they don't put any effort into that stuff at all. You can see how slow that moves, and you can also see how many revolutions it is. Doing that by hand is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, when it comes to things like this, it, it should absolutely have this motor built in. It shouldn't be an option. And of course, this battery isn't charged very well, but... So, I just have the nuts on the wires. They're not on there super tight, so I don't want to run it too much. It'll heat them up, arc it out. But it's working. And this is pretty much done. I'm gonna I'm gonna tidy this up with some zip ties and things, but it's it'll be fine. See, look, now I'm hitting my head on it. All right, the hitch is installed. The hitch works. It's a couple days later. There's been an awful lot of work done on this trailer. This is all hooked up. This is all fine. Why are we welding on the trailer? Well, this front axle has been replaced. The reason why is because this happens. So this rear axle, probably just like the first one, cracked, their tanny nut come out. Can't get another one because they said the parts for it are like in Canada, back ordered for months. And we debated welding it because there's a rubber retaining cushion in there that we could melt. But we talked to the people that made this axle in Albuquerque, and they said that welding it would be fine. Uh, so these torsion axles that go on here uh, you know, yeah, go ahead, you can do whatever you want. Usually, I take like a hole saw, drill holes in the corners, and use a saw to cut it out. Got my cutting torch, got my Vulcan welded out here. It's highly illogical to use this. Now, these guys told me that they had raised the axles three inches, so maybe that's what this. Maybe this bracket is, is here to raise. And that's probably yep. what that is. Yep, this, so, those are Because they wanted more clearance. Don't call me Shirley. You know, the funny thing is, is these original axles are recuable. Oh. So you can adjust the height on the axles at any point. Yeah, no, I saw that. The, because the replacement axles aren't like that. You know what I noticed when I first picked up the trailer? That this wheel in the back was off the ground. So probably when they put this one on, they adjusted the torsion on it so more weight was on that one than this one because if you're on perfect level ground this wheel will spin hmm. unless if it's not under weight so they want to pay it you, you probably have to make that adjustment while it's lifted to figure that out because i i noticed that when we first pulled the trailer out that this wheel was spinning and i thought that was interesting and that explains why because when they put this one on they obviously added extra tension to that one and we and the trailer was actually that's why this tire is probably more worn than that other one. I yeah, agree. This one is, because this one's getting more weight on it than the one in the back. Actually, the axle has wasn't bolted tight, so it was just shaking around under the trailer. And there's that. We, we tightened the bolts because it was just it had a quarter inch movement sh to shimmy. Everybody do the shimmy. Is that a gooey duct in your pocket, or you're just happy to shimmy? Um. A lot going on. Both of these were completely redone. Re -free. Re -free. Put new magnets on the He's cutting wind.
this is the deal. You want to be in this game? You want to be in this car game? This truck and trailer game? You got to have the stuff. You got to have a shop. You got to have welders, cutting torches, entire collection of tools, everything Milwaukee makes. You know, you guys look on YouTube and you see, you see Chris Fix with his blue gloves working on his car in his driveway. Yeah, you can change an alternator or whatever, or change your oil. But if you want to do serious shit like this, you look at what Car Wizard has. You look at what Tavares does, right? That dude has a shop with everything in it and people to help him. You can't do everything by yourself. You gotta have a team of people that you can rely on. And uh, can't do it all by yourself. Trust me. Top and the bottom or it doesn't look like it? You might have to those are those nuts in place well, they just slide out, slide out. yeah because yeah, we... they're gonna fall out you guys might have to tape them in there or put a little put a booger on them <laughs> <laughs> a little tape on them or something a little bubble gum keep them in place on the outside slide right in here yeah. oh they go in there yeah well okay. they they didn't thread the actual brackets because you would have stripped them out because it's cast material but right. those those nuts they are pretty lame they're not as high tensile strength as i would have preferred i i should have gotten while i was over at mcfadden's i should have got some stainless steel square nuts but i, I would have taken all day i actually walked right over to the where those bolts were i got them right away don't so, we need to stick this cable through the hole before mike you could do that anytime okay you can lay it sideways and get it through there yeah, 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 you just put it on release and pull it through the hole. Is that fairly mounted? It is? This is mounted, yes. Yeah, well, you can do it right now. Well, I mean, we need to get through this hole on it. It's with yeah, the cable. You, it should be. You can do that anytime. Hold on. Hey. A little further along. So, put two batteries in here. I just went and bought some of these angle brackets. Put them all on four sides. And then the batteries are actually bridged together with these aluminum brackets. We're not putting crazy high power on them. Um, but you could see how I put the negative over there and the positive over here for this winch. But I've decided that, um, where'd that other Fairlight go? I left it in the other room. We have this other Fairlight adapter we're going to mount in there to give strength to this. So it doesn't accidentally bend itself. This goes straight through, sand sandwiched onto the frame underneath, pretty tight. Um, added myself this grab handle. It's like 12 bucks or something but you know just simple thing like this makes a world of difference i could have got it in chrome but it looks better in the natural aluminum matches everything else uh and just self-tapped it in there i like to use self-tappers they work pretty well in a lot of situations i always add these dock bumpers to all my trailers see this little dock bumper you get these for i don't know 15 or 20 bucks a piece they're six inches tall, three inches deep, something like that. And, uh, you know, you can see where this got whacked at some point. And when you're backing up, sometimes you're going to, you can't see. I'd rather, right, like, for instance, I just had to replace this taillight. This light is new, riveted in, right? And it probably got cracked because they backed into a dock and it cracked something. So by just for 40 bucks, two of these took a, like a five inch self-tapping screw with a washer that some bitch is on there it ain't coming off and you know it's just a small thing that they should put on every trailer that they don't and these are the little additions that i do to every trailer that i get and why these common things aren't on all trailers you know so every time i get a trailer i come through and i um, i do this kind of stuff this interior just bugs me how ugly it is but it's so well insulated. I mean, it's a nice, hot, sunny day here in Las Vegas. It's the middle of June. I'm inside this thing. It's cool as a cucumber inside here. I'm not sweating in here at all. And, you know, it's afternoon. It's, it's what is it? Flex time. It's 5.30. So it's probably 95 degrees out today. But I, I like how this turned out because, you know, I put a little tape on this, but it doesn't touch this lid. But if it did... You know, you got some clearance, clearance, but this is designed to be a step. But the top of the winch actually prevents the lid from going down because you're actually standing on the winch. 
I'm gonna take this handle and probably mount it like right here, maybe. Just as a nice grab handle. These are like seven bucks or something. So, I think this is a cool design and I wanted this super low box because in most cases, most cars and trucks might fit on top of this if you had to pull all the way in. Now, one of the cars I'm planning on bringing back with me is the Lamborghini, my, Lamb my other Lamborghini kit. And it's a pretty wide thing. And I, what I might have to do, if you remember the video, if you saw it, I had to jack it up so it fit over these fenders, these fender wells, and it was a different trailer. I think what I'm gonna do is that when I, I'm gonna have to leave this fender off Matter of fact, I might even just leave it here. And this is just gonna be a big gaping hole. But that'll give me the clearance if I just scooch it all the way over and the side of it. Cause all right, so here's my other cutoff replica, right? And that thing is, I wanna say 81, 82 inches wide, right? It's a big car, it's wide, right? So when you get that thing in here, like it's gonna use up every inch of this. So if I have to cheat the car completely over and have it just resting over these wheels, as I mean, look, when it drives down the road, it's open. So, but you can see the design of these cars, like that thing, the fenders, the wheels, you know, it's a big mofo. Now my other one, you know, it's just like it, except it has even more ground effects that are wide all the way along the bottom. This one's actually a little bit narrower design. So, once I get it in here. And the, the, this is the thing about the winch. It's not about having a broken down car. It's about being able to, re, using this wireless remote, you can guide the car in. So with the wireless remote control, you can stand down here and eyeball it inch by inch, real slow, ball, you know, even by yourself. And you can just reach up and grab the wheel and steer it and readjust it and go forward and back and um, you won't break a car. Okay, we got this thing all basically finished. Put in two batteries. I haven't hooked up the solar panel yet, so I have to just manually charge this with a car charger. But it holds so much power and it, it, it works this way for now until I get the solar system hooked up or get power fed to the truck, which is an option that I could also do. Coming in from that back side is the power that comes from the trailer harness that runs things like these lights, right? So I could just tap off of that power and run it to here and it would charge from the truck while it's in motion. But I want it to charge while it's parked. The hitch works. This, this thing is leaking up here. We're getting water. It's been raining here, which never happens in Vegas. But <clears throat> I took that extra fair lead mount and put it on the back side of this because I needed this to be a sturdy. What the hell? There's water leaking it's not supposed to rain we live in the desert anyway so this is super mounted you know this goes through the frame this goes through i mean this toolbox is in there pretty tight and it serves a dual purpose that 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 top of that winch is basically touching the lid here which will prevent you know i put some tape here which, to put this tape back it's just a little extra protection in case it does mark out but you know, you could stand on this because you're standing on the winch and then you can get up here. So that got happened. Um, we're getting ready to take off. I did replace these little pistons here and all these rubber things, some of the mounts and this fender, you know, there's a little bit of an air gap there and whatnot. It's not perfect, but at least it's on here uh, pretty tight. And uh, I've got some extras. The other project that I did was these ramps. So the ramps, I intended on using some thumb screws. The ones I bought turned out to not be the size. I bought some that were supposed to be quarter 20 and they turned out to not be quarter 20. So I just put screws in there for now. I'll get the correct thumb screws. But basically what I did was I cut some three inch angle iron and bolted it to the ramps, see? And uh, to the hinges, it's all sandwiched in there. And I can't operate them right now. I'll show them operating in the next video when we load the car. But um, these just secure to the lid and they don't move and then you they unfold. And what you can't see is underneath there, I've added some rubber uh, bumpers 
sort of like these dock bumpers, but they're slanted and, and they're made for putting at the top doors of trailers so that when you set it down, you'll notice this is not actually touching the ground. It's resting on the rubber. That way you're not scratching up your door and that's what's supposed to be there, some rubber stompers. And then when these ramps fold out, you've got a nice long rake and you could even prop up, you could use some wheel chocks or something and prop that door up some more if you needed more rake. If you're loading something crazy like one of these Lamborghini cars that has, you know, crazy, that's low. Believe it or not, the clearance on this thing isn't bad. It's actually pretty good. Same thing with the DeLorean. You've got a pretty, I mean, it's not the best, but you've got a pretty decent, you know, because uh, I've seen worse, you know, that, I mean, up here on the DeLorean, there's actually a lot of space. Look how much, I mean, you've got a, a decent amount of space there. Where it gets crazy is when you have cars like this Knight Rider, right? You've got this long nose, but again, it's got a fairly decent um, clearance as well. So, but when you're dealing with these kind of cars, this is the kind of stuff that happens. You got this extra width. This car is pretty high up top. Um, so these things work out pretty well. The other thing that happened though, was I need to have this garage door spring tensioned, increased, because now that we've added this little bit, of, this little bit of extra weight that we put on here has made a serious difference in lifting this door. I don't know if it's possible for me to increase the tension on this. Uh, I'm gonna have to have a garage door guy do that because this is under a spring load. And maybe a garage door guy can fix this for me because I don't want to do it because it's under great tension. But we need to add more tension to these wires if that's possible. You know, I'm disappointed with these struts because these were the heaviest duty ones I could find. And obviously they make more. I think these were 110 pounds a piece, but just not enough to open these doors. This is a two person operation opening this door. You can't do it by yourself. You cannot do it because you have to lift it. Then you have to put these rods in place and then you have to put the pins in place and um you know it's 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 not easy to do it takes two people unless you're like he-man and you're super dexterous and have really long arms so this whole thing is a gigantic pain in the ass i didn't think this through very well i wish this fender was also removable but you'll see that even though it's screwed in it's been tab welded here which is probably what this used to have this should have some kind of a tab i'm probably going to take a piece of ang i'm going to make some angle that goes all the way around this and put an additional seal on it. Because I'm definitely gonna be going through the rain today. And um, you know, when it, if it rains in Vegas, it's definitely raining in New Mexico. <laughs> it rains in New Mexico a lot. You would think that New Mexico being a desert, every single time I've ever been through New Mexico, it has poured down rain. Um, and also Texas. Texas rains pretty bad. So hippies up there working on trying to get that vent sealed. And my plan was to get this solar panel. They had these solar panels on sale at uh, Costco for like 80 bucks, right? 100 watt solar panel. And I bought it because it said includes mounting hardware. It has screws to mount it. The screws, the holes are on the back. S so stupid. It doesn't include any ears or anything to mount it. Like, what? So. And I don't know, I don't even think I could take it with me. I'd have to rank it, wrap it in a blanket. I think that's what we'll do. We'll wrap it in a blanket so I could take it with me. All right, well, I'm trying my damnedest to try to get the hell out of here today because I want it. I, it takes, it's a two day drive to get back to Texas. Two full long days. And uh, usually the halfway point is like Albuquerque. Depends on when you take off, when you stop, because you got to stop by at least 10 o'clock to go to bed. So, it's already noon time so i may have to put it off till tomorrow because if i leave too late then i don't know let's see if i can get you know even if i get everything ready in the next two hours then i'm leaving at two three o'clock it's just too late in the day I'm pissed off anyway uh i'll be back in dallas going to pick up the other the lamborghini car and uh, maybe the other fiero and some other stuff we're working on some projects i'm going to be there for about a week then when I get back, I got another trip to make. So anyway, stay tuned. Catch you guys later. Mm -hmm.